Hey everyone, in this video I'll show you how to install a Power BI using a Mac OS. This method of installing Power BI is completely free. And the only software that you need to install in your Mac is a free application from, uh, from Microsoft. It's called Microsoft Remote Desktop 10, which you can get from the App Store. I also have to point out that this method is not technical at all. So anyone with a little bit of knowledge of how to use computers and the browser will easily follow along and able to install Power BI. So the first step is actually creating an account with Amazon Web Services or AWS. Now, if you already have an account, you can follow along. Uh, you're still going to have an access to a free Windows server. If you're new, uh, you can create an account for free and Amazon is going to give you 12 months worth of uh, server resources for free. Now that you have created an account with Amazon AWS and you've installed the remote desktop uh, platform, let's get into running the instance to install Power BI. So the first thing you want to do is go to the services tab and to the EC2. Make sure that you're selecting the region where you want the instance to be in. You want to select the data center that is close to your location. The closest the data center is, the faster the connection to that instance is going to be. Now, my instance is based in Sydney, so I'm selecting that as the default one. The second thing you want to do after selecting your region is to actually create a key pair. Now, if you already have an account, most probably you can have a lot of key pairs. But if you're new, you're going to need to create a new key pair. So just go by selecting on the key pairs, create a key pair, and just give it a name. For this one, I'm going to say it is a Power BI key, and just create. Now, the created key is going to be downloaded to your system, so keep it safe. We're going to be using that later on. Step three is actually creating the instance. So from the same menu, you're going to click on Instances, launch an instance, and look for a Windows machine. Now, we're going to have a lot of uh, instances coming up. These are just ready-made instances for you. Uh, you want to start with the 2016 base. So that you will see it says free tier eligible. Amazon selects the T2 Micro, which gives you a single CPU with one gig of RAM and 30, by, 30 gigabytes of hard disk space to use, which is on SSD. The T2 Micro is more than capable of running Power BI. More RAM and more CPU is required with complex analytics and large volume of data. Now using AWS EC2 instance, you can easily upgrade that instance at any time without losing any of your data. So starting with a free one is the best option for you. And rather than going through all the options at the top, just select preview on launch and that's going to give you an information of what it is and just click on launch. A window will pop up asking you to select the keeper that you've done in step number two. So we're going to select that from here and you accept to the agreement and then you launch the instance. Click on that instance ID to go to the instances menu to see if your instance is ready. This process should take only a couple of seconds. Once it's launched, you can give it a name for this one. I'm going to say Power BI uh, Dev. Once you've given a name to your instance, you can click on connect. Now, the first thing we want to do is get the password. Now, unfortunately, you're going to have to wait for four minutes before you can actually generate a password. So just give it a few minutes and we'll try again in four minutes. Once the four minutes are passed, you can click on connect again, get password, and you're going to have to locate the key file that you've downloaded from earlier. Decrypt password. Once decrypted, the password is going to reveal itself. And the first thing you want to do is copy all of that information and paste it on LastPass or 1Password for save retrieval afterwards. So let's see how we can actually now connect to the server. So we're going to copy the server name, server address. We're going to go to desktop. Once launched, click on the plus icon and select desktop. PC name is, your, uh, is the address and you want to create a user account. Now, that user account is administrator and the password. And we're going to give it a friendly name. That's an admin. EC2, save, show more, and we can give it a friendly name. So Power BI Dev 
environment. So select on the new environment that we've created. Continue. And we have our new environment starting up. Now give it a few more seconds until everything is being uh, configured. Yep. The first thing I do after installing uh, or setting up a new instance is to install Chrome. Now, if you're comfortable as using Internet Explorer, that's up to you. But for me, I like to use Chrome. So I'm going to click on Internet Explorer. Windows Server Firewall pops up every time you want to connect to something new. And uh, you're going to have just to select an add uh, recursively for every time this comes up for, from now on. Now that Chrome is installed, uh, Chrome is going to ask us to make this a default browser, so open Windows settings. And if you want to add Chrome to your taskbar, just right click on it and pin to taskbar. Now, if you're using a magic mouse for Apple, you're going to have to use the control left click to get access to the right control. Now that's done, let's go and download Power BI. You want to go all the way down and click on Power BI Desktop. Advanced download options. Download, and we're going to select this 64 version of Power BI to download. Once the download is finished, click on the installer file. and just go through the installation process. Now that's installed, uh, you can create a new account if you've never had one, or you can just sign into your own account. All right, so I'm signed in, and I'm gonna go to help to download some sample files. So go to Help, Samples. That's going to open up Chrome. And select any of those. I'm going to select the Sales and Marketing Sample. And you can actually open the sample file. That, and that's going to open up a new instance of Power BI for you. Now, if you're using this instance on a Mac, you're going to have to use the Alt tab rather than the Command tab to switch between them. Now that the sample is opened, you can go to the uh, first report, which is Market Share. And this is where you will see uh, how fast is this instance of EC2 
uh, allows Power BI to be in uh, doing analytics or crunching data. But uh, beyond this, this is a full Windows uh, server, so you can install SQL server on it, you can install ODBC to connect to any data source that you want. Now, how do you get out of this instance? How do you close it? You don't actually have to uh, restart this instance or shut it down. In fact, if you try to uh, say restart, it, it's going to ask you why you're restarting. Is it a hardware failure? Is it planned, not planned? You can actually leave this instance open. The only thing you're going to have to do is just click on Command Q, and that just kills the whole instance. Now, if I open up Remote Desktop at any time, just clicking on it, continue. I'm right back where I left it off before closing it. So what happens if you want to increase the resources of this instance or make it faster in the network or give it more RAM? In order to do so, you're first going to have to in the EC2 instance, you're going to have to stop it. You cannot do changes to an instance that is running. So you stop it. And once stopped, you can go to the instance settings and change instance type. That's going to give you an interface where you can select the type of RAM, uh, how many virtual CPUs. To know exactly how much is that going to cost you, you can go to e AW, do a search for AWS EC2 uh, pricing. Now there's two ways to do this pricing. We're going to open the on-demand one on a new tab, and then we're going to look at the reserved instances. Now the, the on-demand is going to give you the details of the instance. So if you click on Windows and we select the region we're in, that's going to give you all of the instances types the CPUs, the memory, and the type of storage that you have prior, as, as well as the hourly pricing for it. So currently we're using a T2 Micro, which has one virtual CPU and one gigabyte of RAM. And you can see, well, okay, that's the price. Now, what is that price equates to monthly? That's where the reserved instance pricing comes in. So if I go to Windows, and I select Sydney, let's say I want to look for the 2T medium, which gives me four gigabyte of RAMs and two virtual CPUs. So I'm going to say, look for 2T dot medium. And that's going to tell me, well, I'm looking for $41 per month upfront. If I'm doing it uh, on an end demand. But if I want to go for a one year, then I can pay only $527. Uh, that's going to give me 21% discount. I can also reserve it for three years for $1,000. That puts it at 44% and actually drops the price to uh, four cents. Now, bear in mind, if you do choose to change the instance type, nothing's going to change in terms of your installation and your data. Uh, not even your password and your username, the admin. The only thing will change is the actual address. So this address over here, this is the address that we've used to uh, connect to the instance. If you upgrade your instance, this will this uh, instance IP is going to change. So you're going to have to make modifications to your connection accordingly. There you have it. Now you have a Power BI running on a Windows server that you can access from the cloud at any point in time and use it as you're using a real Windows machine. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comment sections. And thank you.